well, that was fascinating. You seem so calm, though. What keeps you up at night, if anything? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm calm because I decided 20 years ago that fear is not a public health strategy. And I know it makes for, I know it makes for great press, you know, the sky's falling, but really it's about education and, and, and good science. Now, what keeps me up at night is what the next pandemic's likely going to be. And it's, Zika is a pandemic, uh, needless to say, but it's not causing hundreds of thousands of deaths. What's likely to cause hundreds of thousands of deaths in the future is flu. We already know that from 1918. So if, I gave, if we did a repeat of 1918, so, so we get flu every year, and I'm gonna tell you right now, my public health message of the day is get vaccinated. Uh, you, we get flu every year, and it changes a little bit, which is why we need a new vaccine every year. But unpredictably, flu just takes off its overcoat, and all of a sudden, you have no protection against it at all. And if we repeat the same thing we saw in 1918 today, 7.5 million Americans would die. Okay, two and a half percent. Think about the number of body bags. Think about how this would completely disrupt our society if within a couple of weeks to months we killed seven and a half million Americans. So flu keeps me up at night. Uh, MERS and diseases like MERS keep me up at night. Uh, I do know, I've seen these health systems. Our health systems are getting better. Our ability to respond to diseases are getting better. Part of my job at Nebraska with the National Ebola Training Center is helps hospitals get better. But we know the risk of healthcare acquired infections here in the United States. And so I worry about MERS as another example. A third example, and I'll stop at the third example, is the next HIV AIDS. So, you know, HIV AIDS, another, nowadays, you know, you think of it in terms of sexual behaviors or IV drug abuse uh, that get you HIV AIDS. But let's remember HIV AIDS was another one of those zoonotic diseases. It came from non-human primates, probably multiple times, and one time it was the right version that made its way into humans, and then it spread from human to human. So I worry about another stealth virus like that that spread through sexual transmission or some other mode, has a long incubation period before you get really sick, and by the time you find, discover it, it's already spread widely. So those are some of the things that keep me up at night about what the next pandemic could be that would have really significant morbidity and mortality. Mm -hmm.